Oh. That was cathartic. Absolute cinema as far as I'm concerned. The teams at CIG have worked so incredibly hard to get to the point where what we just, sh what we just showed you was no tricks, no hacks, just gameplay of the Valakar. I love you too, Gronsu. I want to give a huge thank you to all the people who put in a lot of work to get to the point where what we just showed you is gameplay. As you can imagine, all of that is work in progress. We have some good polishing to do on it, and we didn't want to hold it off. We just wanted to give you an honest view of where we are. That was from a build last week, so... <laughs> With that said, Monster hunting is coming to Star Citizen. And the best part was starting off this epic series of fights with the infamous Valakar, who some of you may remember from 2016. <laughs> uh, this absolute monster of a creature is 300 meters long and sees your light fighters just as puny little ants. You're going to need to assemble your quickest and most nimble pilots to dodge the Valakar's ranged attacks as well as your fastest drivers to bait out the Valakar from the surface, as it's the only way to bring this mighty creature out of the ground is by disturbing the, is, is by disturbing the surface with a ground vehicle. But how does the Valakar stack up to our crew? Well, <laughs> unfortunately, the Valakar stats don't really fit on the screen due to being so powerful. But for some context, it's around 150 times harder to kill than an Aegis Avenger Titan. But to be fair, it's most likely to kill you. So how does it do that? Well, the deadly Valakar has a variety of ways of killing possible threats. So for a high level overview of the fight, it regurgitates rock hard sand that has been compressed inside the Valakar and uses it as a projectile to target foes. But if something's a bit too close for comfort in the sky, it uses its ginormous body to swipe ships out the way. Anything on the ground that it sees as a threat will have to con contend with its bite or its deadly slam. So, a little, little bit fun bit of information. As the Valakar becomes more injured, it will retreat back into the planet's surface. And you'll need to make sure that your ground vehicles stay alive or have backups to bait out the creature again, as well as keeping it interested. So, the big question, in a game like ours, how are we going to communicate the health of this creature? Well, things being physicalized is at the heart of Star Citizen. And we know how much of a large fight the Apex Valakar is, and we need to communicate that in a diegetic way. So you'll see here the Valakar's health from 100% to 1%. You'll see its skin getting more battered and bruised as the fight progresses, giving you an idea of where you are and how close you are. So the nice thing about this, it communicates the Valakar's health without needing any UI or health bars and just purely keeps you immersed in the experience. So number one question, why do you want to kill the Valakar? Well, because it's fun, but I know you sweaty gamers, so it's got loot, also known as harvestables. The Valakar has two very valuable harvestables. Firstly are its pearls. You'll need to mine growths on a variety of locations of Valakar to reveal these pearls. And once you've destroyed the growth skin, you'll see disgusting squidgy innards. But next is its big apex teeth. These are within its mouth, and you'll need a very strong tractor beam to be able to yank these things out. And these, uh, these harvestables will not all come out at the same quality. So you'll be able to learn more about that and how harvestables are going to be used tomorrow in crafting your home. So a, a fun thing here is you'll see the character is standing within the Valakar's mouth as well. So when it dies, it keeps its collision, meaning that you can climb on it, land ships on it, and you know, it's essentially your playground. <laughs> but it, this really shows how big it is. But how big is it really? Well. Fun bit of information. When we first made the collision for this model, Star Engine actually gave us an error saying, like, no, no living thing needs to be this big. You've accidentally added an extra zero onto the size. <laughs> but to give you an idea of the sheer ridiculous scale of this monster, you'll see here in Idris. Anyone who's done Xenophret knows how big the Idris is. You feel like an ant when you're in the Idris, and this makes the, th this makes the Idris look small. There's also an Aegis, Aegis Avenger Titan here as well, but if you look even closer, there's actually a Copion in this image. I'll give you a second to try and spot it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so well done to anyone who spotted it. So it's big. So for some fun numbers, it's 250 copians long, 
47 Aegis Avenger Titans long, and for our American friends, that's about three and a half football fields. Yeah. <laughs> but looking for our Copion friends, the Valakar actually comes in different sizes. So you'll be familiar with the variants we've done before with our quasi grazers and our Copions. They're, you know, they're in different biomes and they have different aesthetics. But moving on, we want to also introduce different creature sizes. So these sizes will have unique behaviors, animation, audio, and harvestables associated to each size. So for our first size, we have the juvenile. These juveniles will respond to stimulus, such as noisy footsteps and loud mining beams. This will cause them to burst out the ground and attack anyone who's disturbing them. And you'll find these in caves near valuable harvestables and minerals. So for our next size, adults. The adult Valakars know not to pick fights and tend to remain to themselves. However, if you exterminate too many juvenile Valakars, this will cause adults to show up, which are three times larger and a lot more angry. Creature sizes are great because they allow us to create varied experiences as well as show you how creatures grow and evolve in the environments they live, live in and grow up in. Beyond that, we have our apex, which has the most valuable harvestables and the most deadly attacks. It's also the biggest living thing in the verse so far. So, in summary, monster hunting is coming. This is, the, this is the first in a large series of apex creatures that you need to gather your crew together to take down this mighty beast. You need a diverse lineup of ships, ground vehicles, loadouts, and skill sets to take out the apex Valakar. Everyone at CIG is incredibly excited to get the Valakar into your hands, and we, and we hope it shows that we're not only doubling down on creatures, we're also committed to bringing you gameplay experiences that only a game of our scale can provide. But that's all for the Valakar, for, for this Valakar. Let's take a look at some other fauna. Now, the Valakar is very exciting, but I also want to share with you the bigger picture for creatures. So let's start with some Valakar variants. Variants so far have typically just had alterations to their loot and appearance. However, we want to go further with what variants can be. For example, what if the Valakar evolved and grew in a swamp environment instead of a desert planet? Or if a Valakar never made it to the surface and only lived in drowned caves? These are the kind of questions that make sci-fi one of the best mediums. And I can hear the questions already. What does an adult cave Valakar look like? What does an apex quasi-grazer look like? Well, <laughs> it's these questions that get everyone excited that works on creatures to give you a glimpse into the big picture. All of these variances and differences and new creatures make up what we call our fauna matrix. The fauna matrix is basically our creature encyclopedia. So these concepts should show you that we want to get more weird and wonderful with our creatures. We started off with more traditional animal references like dogs and birds and cows. But now we're in a position to create the things that we love about sci-fi, which is the weird and the unknown. So looking at where we're going, all of our creatures have been defined for the road to 1.0. We've ensured we've got a rich, diverse, distinct roster of creatures to make each of our planets feel special. As well, you know, as considering the unique elements of various planets, ensuring that they're populated with appropriate creatures. We've been designing creatures in mind so that planets' ecosystems influence their behaviors, designs, aesthetics, and harvestables. With that being said, I would like to give you a sneak peek at our fauna matrix. That's all from me. I'm very happy to bring the Valakar to all of our backers. It's really like nothing else you've played before. I'll leave you with this last video. Enjoy the rest of CitizenCon, everybody.